Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time, we completed our fuel power plant, which makes an astounding 112,000 megawatts of power. And that should be just enough power to get our nuclear power plant up and running. However, if we're getting nuclear online, we absolutely 100% need drones, so we can get the spicy rocks. So that's our goal today, to get batteries automated, the drones moving and grooving, and then finally, to get the spicy rocks to where we're gonna build our nuclear power plant. And if you're excited for that, remember to subscribe and leave a like. Oh yeah, and there's been some other huge updates, and uh, some are kind of uh, strange. <laughs> no, it's just that mods have been updated, a lot of them now. So, I've downloaded a bunch of mods that will help us on our quest to automate the world! Specifically, we got the smart mod again, which allows us to build platforms super quick, among a million other things. We have this empty hands mod, which is simply an item that goes in your hand slot. So, when you scroll through things, you go from like the Xeno Basher, and then to empty hands. So you don't have like an item blocking your entire screen anymore. We still have the bigger inventory, so we have the million inventory slots. We got big statues as well, so once we get some tickets and some statues built, they'll be bigger. <laughs> and we also have pack utilities. Uh, pack utilities is a mod that allows me to play like creatively. Uh, mainly though, it'll just be for when I'm taking screenshots for thumbnails or if I'm doing like a cool YouTube shot. So that's kind of that. All of them will be linked in the description. But anyway, we got lots to do today. Mean thing, aeronautical engineering. Let's select this milestone, plop in all of the things, and let her rip. Awesome. Drones unlocked. Milestone reached. Aerial transport of resources is now possible with the use of drones, ideal for shipping across long distances or difficult terrain. Extremely cool. Yes. Drones, we got them. It's time. It's almost actually time. Drone ports, they're really cool. But the only way to use them is if we've automated batteries. So, take a good look at it. It's gonna be a bit before we get back to that. We need to automate first. Batteries though, batteries, batteries, batteries. I believe they are done in a manufacturer. Or we can just press N, look up battery. And there we go. Ah, it was actually the blender. So this is the default recipe. It uses sulfuric acid, some alumina solution, and an aluminum casing. Okay. Well, I know for a fact there's an alternate, so off to the ma'am! And we'll let that bad boy cook for a little while. In the meantime, we're gonna rock and roll. We are going to be making the batteries over near our aluminum factory. Because I'm pretty sure no matter what recipe you want to use, you're gonna need some aluminum aluminum in order to make the batteries. So it's been a little while, but here we are again at our aluminum area, where we're gonna be processing all of the aluminum in our world. It's right here on the map, very good location. You got nitrogen, you got aluminum and bauxite everywhere. It's fantastic. And we even have a wild man. What do we got? That alternate battery recipe. Hello, hello, my friend. Come with me. What is, who are you? Not, no, no, nope, don't look at it. Not today's dealio. We want the classic battery recipe. Uh-huh, so now we have two. So let's check them both out and let's see which one we want. We are going to need a lot of batteries, by the way. There are going to be a lot of drones flying around our world. And I think they need a minimum of five batteries per trip. So, yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be a lot of batteries. So, classic battery. Sulfur, just the straight up sulfur. Aluminum sheets, cool, plastic and wire. Okay, and then the battery in the blender. Sulfuric acid, that is a one to one ratio with sulfur. So it's like 50 sulfur plus 50 water equals 50 acid, so. That's not too bad. Alumina solution, 40 per minute. An aluminum casing, or aluminium casing. Hmm, numbers sound pretty, pretty oof on that one. Mainly because it uses alumina 
Okay, and I wanted to confirm the numbers here, and my goodness gracious, dude, the blender recipe for batteries is, like, horrifically bad. So I wanted to calculate how much alumina solution makes how many aluminum ingots, and it's about a 75% ratio. So say we had 240 uh, alumina per minute times 0.75, we get 320 aluminum. So that means 40 alumina solution times 0.75 is 30 aluminum ingots. So that's how I'm looking at the alumina solution in the battery recipe. So if that's 30 aluminum ingots, and then how many aluminum ingots for the casing? Well, it'd be one assembler running at about 18% here. So, that's 150 times 18%. Let's do that. That's 27 aluminum ingots there. So 57 aluminum ingots to make 20 batteries here. Versus the 52.5 alkalad sheets in the classic battery recipe. Which would take about the same amount of aluminum ingots, but at the end of the day, you get 30 batteries instead of 20. So, like, bruh. This recipe, this is the one, absolutely the one. Anyway, so let's start processing. Let's see how things are gonna go here. So fully overclocked, 75 batteries per minute, neat. That means we're gonna need 52.5 times 2.5, 131.25 alclad aluminum sheets, gotcha. And the rest is kind of pretty fill in the blank. The plastic is gonna be super simple because we have a train with plastic that passes on by, GG easy. You could easily use iron wire to get the wire, and the sulfur. The sulfur, the sulfur, the sulfur. Well, we're gonna have to go on a little journey for that one, I think. A little journey into, hmm, the stinky pit. All right, so there we go. Our little bit of sulfur overlooking the swamp. Ick. Normal th Woo what? in this space time continuum How am I alive right now? Jump, 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 jump back What on this planet? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Sorry, panicking nuts. How am I alive? I literally am at zero health. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. That doesn't even make sense. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I need to catch a breath. Eat some nuts here. Wow, okay, um, okay, noted. There's a bad guy up there. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> sulfur is right up there. That's, okay, that's fine. We can belt that back. Uh, the main reason that's fine is because we have some bauxite down here, right next to the swamp that we're belting back anyway, because, you know, we're making an aluminum plant. So, I started a belt highway all the way back, and I guess we'll just add on the sulfur as well. Then we'll get the whole crew back to base, process everything, and we'll have batteries. Maybe a cup of tea to relax, because, oh my gosh. I legitimately do not know how we survived that. Okay, so the party pasta, it's all in. We are good to go, and our battery processing is underway. Also, I took a moment to see how on earth I, like, survived that previous thing. And I, I thought maybe I had, like, god mode on with pack utilities, because it's pretty much like a cheaty mod. And you can just do exclamation point god, and you have full health. But you don't take any damage, if even if that's enabled. So, like, I literally don't know how, like we made it through that. Anyway, super weird, but we are good to go. So, the batteries are processed, and they are rocking and rolling. I kinda did some weird stuff here, though. Uh, number one, I went with the iron wire, of course, because <laughs> I don't know where I'm gonna find any copper, and there's iron everywhere, so there we go. Wire for D's. Like I said earlier, we're getting the plastic from the train. This is coming from our fuel power plant. It's just like a runoff plastic that's really meant for our storage room. Sulfur we just brought over. Then the L-Cloud sheets are just being made with the runoff production from our other aluminum setup. So yeah, it's a little, you know, messed up, but hey, it should work out. Should be making a cool 75 batteries per minute. And all we gotta do is power the whole thing on. There we go. And now, we have all of the batteries in the world being produced. Well, at least a good starter amount. 
And the first thing we gotta do with drones is we gotta transport these batteries right out of Dodge. I have no idea if 75 batteries per minute is gonna be enough for us for the entire playthrough. So, we're gonna set them off on a drone. The drone will go somewhere else. And then, in case this needs to be like expanded a lot, we can move the drone port wherever we need and GG easy won't mess up too much stuff. So, that's all cool. Mean question is, where do we bring the batteries to? Well, we are going to bring them to our central base. Yes, we're gonna have a central base in the world. So, I mentioned this earlier, but we're gonna do a multi-base structure where we have a bunch of other bases dotted around, but we still need one central one to have a proper storage room, our space elevator, and most importantly, we need it to put together all of the space elevator parts because they're gonna be produced kind of like all over the place. So we're gonna pick a spot to bring everything together. And that's gonna be pretty much in the middle of the red forest. <laughs> Not exactly the middle, but pretty dang close. We're gonna be building over it on like the cliff's edge between the red forest and this blue lake area. I love this blue lake biome. It is beautiful to look at, and I considered building our base in here. There's water, there's flat ground, it's very nice. But then I realized I like looking at it more than I like building in it. So our base is on the border of the two biomes, and we're mostly gonna build out in towards the red forest area, because you know, it's stinky and mm -hmm. But it's a very good location for us here. It's very centralized. Most of our production and things is going to be happening in this top left corner as well. But again, it's mainly just for the view. Like, come on, look at that view, baby. <laughs> it's lovely. Alrighty though, so the train is coming up this way. It's gonna scoot across the lake up through here, up the cliff, and it's gonna park its little booty somewhere down here. That train will bring in some items and move some stuff around. On today's topic though, the drones are going to be over in this section. I'm sorry though, what's that? Is that an oil well? I did not even know this was here. I didn't even notice this while I was building the platform. What? Crude oil? Really? Normal? Really? Pure? Oh, what? Wait, this is pure? What? I did okay, I'm learning so much right now. I didn't realize that some of the nodes could be pure and impure. Super, super convenient. Didn't even know that. Even better to have this spot here. We got a little bit of oil next door. Beautiful. But anyway though, yeah, our drones are gonna be right here. We're gonna have the train somewhere by the stinky clouds there. And that's really all I have planned with this central base right now. Our main goal is still nuclear power, so we're just getting this installed and we'll kind of work on it more later on. Okay, so I've done a bit of busy work here. Got the train track installed and the train station in place, and man, let me tell you, building on the ground is all fun in games, but when you have to go from like, the ground to some organized structure, oh, these train tracks can be super, super annoying. But it's okay, we got her done, and the train station's in. Still got a little bit of foliage to kind of deal with, that's okay. Speaking of dealing with foliage, fun fact, but these giant trees over here, you can actually destroy them now. Uh, before you weren't able to, and that's why I never really liked to build in the red forest, but now you can kind of blow them up, get them out of the way, and build whatever you want. So that's cool. And we'll be expanding that way and getting rid of the rest of the trees here later on. Right now though, the train station, looking good, eh? I have it sunk into the floor a bit, so as we're walking around at this level, you can look down and see the train doing its thing, having a good old time. Nice little overview of it all. And then we'll have some kind of hyper tube uh, pathway to get us to where we need to go, or to the places we need to go, like over to the right here, where we're gonna have our new storage room. So this is gonna be our new permanent storage room, not our temporary base one. And this will go out that way. This base's item spine is gonna be right here, because we have the drones way over there, the train there, items by in here, good to go. So all of the stuff will get organized and go into the factories that go and built out this way. So looking cool, looking cool. Balcony made, view still, superb. Train track, oh! Train track looks so good. 
It's gonna be so fun watching the train come in and out. Anyway, it's gonna be more fun to watch the drones. Oh, that's super quick. This is where our power is gonna be situated, so all of the switches and stuff go down that way. All the power organized over here. And yeah, the drones. The drones are all over this way. So we're gonna have many, many, many drone ports around here. This is only the beginning. Only the beginning. But it looks nice. Nice and organized. Also, to add some spice, added these pipes going through here. They're going to the wall. They'll combine together and they'll do something. I don't really know yet. I just wanted to get them organized before everything got it up and running here. It looks pretty cool. It looks nice. Look at all these drones. Millions of drones. Hundreds of millions of drones. Now what to do with the drones? Well, number one, we need a way to import batteries to the base. And we are going to do that through this drone port here. So we have a drone that's running. We do not have a drone that's running. I'm pretty sure we could build a drone. And then, off it goes. Wake up, brother. Wake up, samurai. Not enough batteries. <laughs> Good night, samurai. Here we go. You shall be the chosen one. Just have to set your port. So this is gonna be the battery export. It will deliver to the import. Live, yes, yes. Good! Our very first drone is about to move. It's about to groove. Let's take it for a spin. Fly me back home, brother. Take me away. No way this thing's gonna eat me off into the forest. No way! Okay. So this will transport the batteries back over there. We'll load the batteries from the import. Oh my gosh. <laughs> into the rest of the drone ports and everything will be great. Right? No, no! I said no eating! Who could have seen that one coming, right? <laughs> okay, but we're back and so is the drone with the batteries. Hello, brother. Welcome home to your drone port. Awesome. So, yep. Yeah. That's unloading all the batteries, going into a storage, and the storage distributes all the batteries to the rest of the drone ports. So we have a million new options that we'll be kind of using for later. We're only going to be messing with a couple drone ports today. Main thing is, a battery export drone port. So what I wanted to do is have a scalable system of drones where we can set up drones anywhere and not have to worry about batteries. So for example, we have our main drone system we just built there with all of the stuff at the main base. But then, somewhere else in the world, we would have another little drone system, say at a resource import, say we're getting like uranium, and then have another drone port at the resource node. So let's just call this uranium. The problem here is we don't have the batteries. But with that drone export, we could have a drone that would take the batteries from our main central base, deposit them into other systems, and then this system would just run independently. At least that would be the goal. So we put this down, set this port to go to, I guess, um, resource import? Or maybe uranium? Sure and off it goes, delivering batteries. I've already set this up so it's loaded up with batteries, or at least a few, and we'll bring the batteries over this way. You only need batteries in one of the two drone ports, by the way. So either batteries here or batteries there. Doesn't really matter. We'll just have batteries here. This will go out this way, because we'll be exporting batteries. There we go, and importing the resource again like uranium and that should be good to go we export the uranium and all systems good to fly now this would be the ideal solution because now we can just scale this infinitely but there's a major 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 problem and that's with this rascally drone you see at some point in time the batteries back here will fill up and if this guy can't unload batteries, he sits there forever. So that means if we have another drone trying to go from the resource node 
to the resource input area, it will just have to wait forever. And just to visualize, this is the resource drone. It's going to go grab some more resources. It goes over to here, where the drone's parked, where it's like trying to unload batteries. It's very sad. And this one will just fly over in like one second. Boop. And enter a holding pattern for literally ever. Now this is just a demonstration. This is actually just waiting here because this drone port doesn't have any power. But this is pretty much what would happen when the batteries filled up. So, big oof there, unfortunately. However though, all problems can be solved with more drones. So, in order to not have a drone park in one of the drone ports forever, you would add a new drone port in, which would only fetch batteries. So the drone from this drone port would always be trying to go back to our central base here to grab batteries from this drone port. That way, if these two drone ports aren't using enough batteries and this guy parks, he will park over here forever, not clog up these two systems, and the battery export drone pad won't ever get clogged up either. Because since it's not the home port for a drone, no drones will ever actually park there. And I know that all sounded super ultra confusing, so I just made a diagram here to kind of explain it a little bit better. And this just shows how all of the drone subsystems are grabbing batteries from the main battery export hub, which is in our central base now. And this will work perfectly because the system is infinitely scalable. So I'd highly recommend you guys try this system out. However, we're not going to use this, at least right now. Reason being, the trains have to go to every one of our mini bases because they bring the main power line to them. So if we have the train there anyway, we may as well bring the batteries as well, and then we can set up drone bases elsewhere. However, if we ever do need to set up like an independent like drone base, this is how we would go about it. So maybe we'll use a system like this for maybe uh, getting nitrogen or something like that. Or at least for now, we have our drone system planned out. We got a drone bay as well, and we got our central base up and started. So lots of good stuff happening. But now we gotta put these drones to the test and get that nuclear spice. So we're moving over to our nuclear power plant. And in this playthrough, we're building our main nuclear power plant over here. Might seem pretty strange to have a nuclear power plant over here. No uranium nodes nearby at all. In fact, the closest one is way up on the hill over here, and it's an impure node, and then another node's over here. But, distances are irrelevant now! We have drones! The drones can go whoop, come back, whoop, come back, not a problem at all. Also, this area is very close to, you know, the ocean, so plenty of water. We have a variety of resources in this area as well to use. And it is extremely easy to bring a train through here because this is one of the starting biomes. So yeah, this is perfect. And I even got the train station built here already. So the train station's gonna be right on in the middle here. Then we'll have some kind of, I don't know, train intersection as well out front. And some drones over to the right and the left. And the drones will run off and get their uranium. So moving quick here, added in the drone ports over to this train station along with the intersection, and there we go. The battery production has been switched up as well, so now the batteries all enter the main train line that's going around the world. So now we have batteries everywhere. And then of course, if we're going to deal with the spicy rocks, we absolutely need to unlock the hazmat suit. So I'll get that and automate the filters. Milestone reached. So you know, we can survive. And now we can safely start to get some uranium. So there's a new node up on the tallest hill in the game, way up over here. Unfortunately, it is an impure node, but that's okay. Because at the end of the day, with a Mark III miner, there should be about 300 uranium per minute, which is awesome. And also now, because of the drone ports, we don't need to worry about belt work. We just have to bring the power on up very carefully. And there we go. Just build a drone and all the uranium is ours. Doot doot doot. There you are. And connected. Ready to scoot. But of course, we need the Mark III miners here if we're going to be mining uranium. So I'm making some fused modular frames here really quick. 
just in a real temporary setup over here. And we'll use those along with some super computers to unlock the Mark III miners and turbo motors. So, boom, bop, bang. And there we go. Mark III miners are ours. And oh my gosh, I did not know this, but they changed the recipe for the Mark III miners, so now they need fused modular frames as well. Oh god, do we have any extras? I doubt it. Did we? No. So we're gonna have to make more of those. Uh, that won't be the end of the world. Good thing is though, in preparation in starting this playthrough, I gave myself a handful of turbo motors, just so we could make a couple Mark III miners. Well, more than a couple. Mainly though, this is just so we could get nuclear going. But honestly, we could pretty easily automate these as well. At least basically. Anyway, let's see if we have any more extras of these, 27? That'll do. Cause now after climbing this freaking mountain again, we can make that freaking Mark III miner here. Goodness gracious, what an ordeal. Hopefully this is the last time we literally ever have to come up here. But with that now, we just throw in the power shards and that is going to be 300 uranium per minute. Awesome. Just gotta hook that up to the platform. Connect up the power, and off we go. And that means we can bring the uranium back to one of these drone ports over here. So uranium, inbound, impure. Perfect. And we just kinda go from there to every other uranium node we need in order to make our nuclear power plant dreams a reality. However though, we'll be getting to that next time because oh boy, this is gonna be a super massive project and we've already done quite a bit today. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching, but have a fantastic rest of your day and bye bye.